Hello and welcome to this video on Microsoft PowerPoint. My name is Kyle Pugh. Now I'm going to walk you through during this session a brand new feature found within Microsoft PowerPoint Office 365 or PowerPoint 2019. So as long as you've got one of those new up-to-date versions, it is now March 2020, you're going to have access to this feature. Now if you got an earlier version like 2016 or 13, now you still will be able to take advantage of presentations that have the Zoom feature in there. They're just going to act more like links. Uh, but you just won't have the ability to uh, create new Zooms inside of the earlier versions. Got to be on Office 365 or PowerPoint 2019 standalone. And it works both on the uh, Windows and the Mac version of those newer versions. So before we get in there and see how to create Zooms, let's get an understanding of what Zoom is all about and what this feature is and how we can really get excited about the PowerPoint Zoom feature. Now open in front of you, I've got an example file and I'll provide a link for it down in the description. This will take you to my blog where you can find a link to this PowerPoint file. Download it, you can follow along with me, you can practice with this file before you start to implement this inside of your own PowerPoint presentations. So inside of here, you can see on the left that I've got a number of slides. There we have it. Uh, I've got 11 slides in there, so it's not a very big presentation, but it's going to get the point across on how to work with Zoom and what Zoom is all about. Now, the very first slide that I've got there, it's a simple slide. It's got a couple little graphics. It's got this circle on there that's going to act like a button. When I click that button while presenting, it will navigate the presentation to a specific section within the presentation. Now, if you look closer on the left-hand side of the screen, I've got sections. You can see the first one there is called Default Section. Then I've got one called PP Morph, PowerPoint Morph. And if I keep scrolling down, I think that's the only two sections I got currently. Now, the idea of Zoom is it creates a navigation screen, kind of a splash screen, a table of contents that the presenter can then utilize to navigate around within the presentation. Take a look. I'm going to go ahead and on my keyboard, I'm going to press the F5 key. I'm going to start the presentation, start the show. So I'll bring it up on my screen. And now you'll notice when I run my mouse over this button, this graphic here says morph, I get the little finger icon like it's a link. And when I click on it, it will zoom to that portion or section of the presentation. This is the PowerPoint Office 365 morph. This is what morph's all about, yada, yada, yada. I hit my right arrow, click with my mouse. I'll then be able to pick up and navigate to the next slides within the presentation. Talk all about morph, see examples of morph, and so on. Now, when I'm all done with this section of the presentation, I'll just quickly get through these slides here. Here's the last one. When I hit my right arrow or click again, it will then take me back to that screen that I started on the Zoom screen, the presentation screen, the table of contents. Now imagine I've got all sorts of little graphics, little buttons here that I can click on that will take me to specific areas of the presentation. And when I'm done with that section, it will then take me back to the main screen where I can navigate to another section of the presentation. Now previously, you know, giving presentations, I might be up there going from slide one to two to three, right? kind of rattling off the information and presenting it. And somebody might say, hey, hey, well, let's go back a couple of slides. I got a question. Well, then I've got to back, 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 or I've got to right click and go to a specific slide or use some other shortcut to take me back to a previous slide. Maybe even interrupt my presentation where I escape out and I go back to the slide and then start from that slide. What a hassle, right? The Zoom allows you to create more dynamic, exciting presentations by being able to present and navigate to any section within presentation. And you can see when I clicked on it, it actually zoomed, it provided this pretty slick animation taking me into that section of the document. Now I'm gonna escape out, take me back to my working presentation. And remember, when I clicked that button while presenting, it took me to a section, in this case, PP Morph, took me to that section to pick up and present from there. Now. That's what Zoom's all about, seeing an example of it. Well, how do you create Zooms within your presentation? Well, within PowerPoint, there are three different types of Zooms you can create. There's a section Zoom, where you can create a button, send you the link, 
that'll take you to that section of the presentation. That's what I've done here. I click this, it takes me to the PP Morph section of the presentation. There's also a summary zoom, which actually creates the summary slide and places all the links to the different areas of your presentation. Then you've also got the third one, you've got a slide zoom, and that allows you to create a link, a button, that'll take you to a specific slide within the presentation. So let's take a look at how you create these. So I'm on my default section slide, my main slide there, and I wanna create a couple more buttons here that'll take me to another section, another slide, another area portion of my presentation. Well, super simple. I go to my insert tab, I go over to zoom, this is underneath the links section, zoom, and there's my three different types of zooms. Now, FYI, if you're working on a brand new presentation, all of the options here may not be active for you yet. For example, the section zoom won't be available until you have a section in the presentation. Okay. So let's take a look. I've already got a presentation here, but right now slides two through 11 are all found within the same section. If I hit that little arrow there to collapse the section, you can see that they all go away. Well, you know what? That should only be about morph. And morph goes from two to slide eight. And then slides nine and 10 are about tables. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to slide nine, which is the beginning of the table section, the end of the morph section. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to add a section. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'll call it PP Tables, PowerPoint Tables, and I'll hit rename. And now I've got a new section in there. So once a section is created, I can then go back to my main slide there. I can go to Insert, Zoom, and you'll then have Section Zoom available to you. Okay, so just be aware, all the options may not be active until you have those sections created and then you can create Section Zooms. So let's try creating one. I've already got one that takes me to the morph section. Let's now create one that takes me to the tables section. So again, insert zoom section. And here I'm gonna pick a specific section. So I'm gonna grab my section PP tables. I'll grab that one, I'm gonna go ahead and insert. And it creates by default, it creates a graphic, an image. You can see that I now have this little zoom tab and it's got a bunch of image or or picture styles and formatting options there for me, but it creates a little image of the first slide within that section. So you see slide number nine there, which is in the table section. There it is, tables, fun with PowerPoint tables, got a little table on it, so a few bullets. And if I go back to my first slide, it's a preview of that slide. Now, this is super slick. It's a live preview. So if you modify the first slide in the section, for example, if I go back there, and I change this table format. Right now it's orange, which I actually want to keep, but if I go to table design, I'll pick this green one. And I got green there. And if I go back to my main slide, it's now green. It's a live preview. You make updates and you've then updated the navigation. Well, let's try this out. I'm gonna hit F5 on my keyboard. I'm gonna start the presentation. So there's my button for morph. We know what that does. That takes me to the morph section. But now I've got this button here, tables, fun with PowerPoint tables. I give that a click. I now skipped over the morph section and I'm now into the section about tables. I click, right arrow, whatever. I then navigate through the slides of that section. Super slick. Hit my escape key and I'm gonna close that out, get back to my presentation. More dynamic, more exciting, a quicker, more efficient way to navigate within your presentation. Not so much linear, Slide one, two, three, four. Don't have to interrupt the presentation to jump back and forth. I can get to the screen here and I can navigate to any section or portion of my presentation. Now remember the other options in there. I had insert zoom, summary zoom. That one, you can start out with your 40 slide deck or whatever, and then you wanna create a summary slide that contains buttons, links, to take you to different areas within the presentation. Right there, summary zoom. Then you got slide zoom. That'll take you to a specific slide. 
I click on that. I pick the slide I want to go to. It creates the graphic. Click. Take me to that slide within the presentation. Now, this feature slick. Really easy to use. Insert zoom. You got your options right there. Try it out. Practice it. Now, I do want to show you one more thing here. Now, this little graphic, remember, it's created by default. You go insert zoom. You pick your type of zoom. It picks up on the slide or the first slide within the section, and that's your button now. Well, maybe I want to create something more like this right here, this morph option right here. Well, once you got an image, I can then right click on it and you got an option for change image. And from there, I can change the image. I can navigate to my computer. I can find whatever image I want, something I've created, something I've downloaded. So I snapped a picture with my camera, whatever it is. And I can use that image instead of the slide image okay? right there. Now, the way that I created this one, this little circle and the text, I did this in PowerPoint. So no use for, no reason to use something like Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever to create these fancy graphics. You can create them right here instead of PowerPoint. And just really quickly, I can go to insert shapes, all sorts of shapes here. Let's say I just keep the theme. I'll grab an oval. Let's create a circle here. And I'm gonna change some colors. Let's say I go uh, shape outline is gonna be white. I'm gonna change the thickness or the weight of that line. Let's go to four. And I'm gonna change the fill. Let's do a green this time. And I'm gonna do some text in there. So I need a, need a text box. So I'm gonna go, uh, well, you know what? I don't even need a text box. I can just double click this thing. And let's call this one tables. Then I'll change the font. Let's make that impact just to match the other one. And that's looking pretty good. Let's move this guy out of the way. Let's put this one here. So this just really quickly, I can create a little shape. Now what I wanna do is replace this right here, the default graphic, the default slide with this image. Well, right now this is still a shape. You can see I got my shape format tab with all my shape tools. I need to convert this to an image and then utilize that to change this image. Well, if I right click the shape, there's an option for save as picture we'll call this uh, tables, we'll call it pp-tables. I'm just I'm gonna match my naming convention that I used before, hyphen icon, zero one, and I'll save that. So now I can delete this guy, I don't need it anymore, or maybe I'll keep it around because I'm gonna create multiple buttons and I'll use that as the template, but I'll get rid of it for now. I'm gonna right click on the default image that the Zoom created for me, and I'll change image, change image. I'm gonna go from file, because I just created that and saved it to my computer. There it is, tables, insert, and there it is. So now, F5, show my presentation, and I've got my link there. Take me to the tables section. Boop, boop, boop. Take me back, I can go to morph, go through the morph section. I'm just quickly jumping through these slides. Take me back. Now, one last thing here, then we'll wrap up this video. The zoom creates this border around the image, which I really don't care for. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'll select it, I'll go to zoom, and there is an option in here to get rid of the border. Let's see, I'll go to zoom border, and I'm gonna say no outline. And there it is, no border around the image. Now, with that selected under the, underneath the zoom tab, there are image or picture options there that you get through typical images. But then on the left, you got your zoom options. There's your change image. You can change the duration. Zoom transition, which I like. It creates that animation effect going between this main slide and the, oof, and the sections or slides or whatever you navigated to. And then you've also got return to zoom. That's a good one. Once you get done navigating to the end of that section, it'll then take you back to this slide, your zoom slide, or the element that zoomed you into the next section. So that's it. Insert, zoom, and you've got your options right there. Essentially links to help you create more efficient, dynamic, exciting presentations through navigation. So if you've enjoyed this, you've learned something new, give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.